Hey everybody, happy Wednesday. It is 7.30. We are in the middle of the week and it is great to be back with you again tonight. I hope you enjoyed the surprise guest reader on Monday night. Uh, Mr. Butts filled in for me and did a great job. We are back in the Jesus Storybook Bible tonight. We are continuing through the life of Jesus in the New Testament now. We're talking about some of the miracles that he performed, some of the stories and parables that he told. And tonight's story is a little bit different because we talk a little bit more about Jesus and who he is and what kind of things that he did. Tonight's story is called The Servant King. It was Passover, the time when God's people remembered how God had rescued them from being slaves in Egypt. And every year they killed a lamb and they ate it. The lamb died instead of us, they would say. But this Passover, God was getting ready for an even greater rescue. Jesus and his friends were having the Passover meal together in the upstairs room. But Jesus' friends were arguing. What about? Well, they were arguing about stinky feet. Stinky feet? That sounds kind of strange, but it's right. They were arguing about stinky feet. Now, the thing about feet back then was that people didn't wear shoes. They only wore sandals, which might not sound too unusual, except in those days, the streets were dirty. And I don't just mean dirty. I, I mean dusty, dirty, stinky, dirty, with all of the cows and the horses, all of those animals everywhere. You can imagine the stuff that was on the road. And that stuff ended up on people's feet. So anyway, someone had to wash away the dirt, but it was a horrible job. Who on earth would ever dream of volunteering to do it? Only the lowest, lowliest servant. I'm not the servant, Peter said. Nor am I, said Matthew. Quietly, Jesus got up from the table. He took off his robe and he picked up a basin of water. Then he knelt down and he started to wash his friend's feet. You can't, Peter said. He didn't understand about Jesus being the servant king. If you don't let me wash away the dirt, Peter, Jesus said, you can't be close to me. Jesus knew that all people needed most was to be clean on the inside. All of the dirt on their feet, it was nothing compared to the sin, the dirt that was inside of their hearts. Then wash me, Lord, Peter said, tears filling his eyes, all of me. One by one, Jesus washed everyone's feet. I am doing this because I love you, explained Jesus. Do this for one another. Now, one of Jesus' friends had made a bad plan. No one else knew what that plan was, but Jesus knew, and so did Judas. Judas was going to help the leaders capture Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Go on, Judas, Jesus said. And Judas got up, and he left the meal and left the room and walked out into the night. Then Jesus picked up some bread and he broke it and he gave it to his friends and then he picked up the cup of wine and he thanked God for it and he poured it out and he shared it. My body, like this bread, it will break, Jesus told them. This cup of wine is like my blood, it will pour out. 
But this is how God will rescue the whole world. My life will break and God's broken world will mend. My heart will tear apart and your hearts will heal. Just as the Passover lamb died, so now I will die instead of you. My blood will wash away all of your sins and you'll be clean on the inside in your heart. So whenever you eat and you drink, remember, Jesus said, I have rescued you. Jesus knew it was nearly time for him to leave the world and to go back to God. I won't be with you very long, he said. You are going to be very sad, but God's helper will come. And then you will be filled up with a forever happiness that won't ever leave you. So don't be afraid. You are my friends, and I love you. Then they sang their favorite song and walked up to their favorite place, an olive garden. It's a story that we hear at Easter time, the one that we just read tonight. We hear about how Jesus spent his last night here with his friends and he gave them a special meal to remember him. And the meal that they received was part of the meal that they were celebrating, the Passover. Way back in the early parts of the Bible, we heard the story of the 10 plagues when God's people were slaves in Egypt. And one of the plagues, God told his people, he said, kill a lamb and roast it and eat it. And as you eat it, be ready to leave. The other thing that they were told to do that was kind of strange was to take the lamb's blood and to put it on their doors. And that when the angel who was coming to kill all the firstborns saw that, he would pass over the house. And year after year after year after year, God's people did that. They made that sacrifice to remember, to make sure that they were covered by blood. Well, we don't have to do that anymore because when Jesus died, he died once for all time and for all people. He was the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And because of Jesus, we can live with God forever and ever and ever. And when we celebrate communion in church, like we will this weekend, we're reminded of that. We're reminded of how God saved his people a long time ago in the Old Testament and how he sent Jesus to save us forever. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for today and for all of the things that you do to remind us how much you love us. You give us a special meal to remind us of the things that you did for us when you died on the cross for our sins when you were raised to life and when you went back to heaven. Help us to remember how much you love us and how you want us to be with you forever. In Jesus name we pray, amen. Friday night, we'll read another story that happens near the end of Jesus' life on earth. We'll hear a story about him praying in a garden with his disciples. And we'll hear as we get to Sunday about that sad time when Jesus died for our sins. But we know that it all happened because God loves us so much. And I want you to remember that as we head into the rest of this week. God loves you. 
But God loves not just you, but everybody in the whole wide world. And as God's followers, he wants us to love other people just like he loves us. So that's your challenge this week, is to love people the way God would love them, the way Jesus would love them. One quick reminder, don't forget that this Saturday is our parking lot parables. We still have room available for people to join us, so I hope you will be able to join us. I know that there are a lot of you that are gonna be going out of town for a quick last minute weekend away before school starts but I hope I see a bunch of you there on Saturday night from 6 to 7.30 for Parking Lot Parables. Don't forget if you're coming to sign up so we can have everything ready for you. And then I will look forward to seeing you Friday night for Bible Bedtime Stories and then Sunday at church. Have a great rest of your week and I will talk to you all again on Friday. Bye everybody.